I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone because more and more I'm seeing clips from The View that don't completely make me lose my mind. Like a couple of weeks ago, they talked about the election and, you know, they brought up Abigail Spanberger's criticism of the left and how she believes that defund the police and Medicare for all. And, you know, the label of socialism led to Democrats losing seats in the House. And when I saw The View put out a segment where they talk about this, you know, I kind of braced myself because I expected them to have a really, really terrible take. But surprisingly, they were all reasonable. The conversation that they had about this was substantive and furthermore, it was correct. They talked about how, you know, the incumbent Democrats that support Medicare for All actually won re-election, and it's a very popular policy. Uh, so when I saw them talk about something that Obama said lately with regard to defund the police and how Democrats shouldn't say it, once again, I braced myself because I figured that that last segment was just an outlier. But once again, we saw a pretty substantive discussion, uh, but not as much as the last one, not as not as uh good as the last one, I should say, because Sonny Hostin really was the voice of reason on this panel, and she got pushback. Sonny Hostin actually called out Barack Obama and disagreed with him, which is something you almost never see in mainstream media. Uh, and she got pushback, but I do want to respond to some of the points made by individuals who disagree with her, because I think that there is a kernel of truth to what they're saying, but it's just, it's not applicable to defund the police. And I think that Sonny Hostin basically explains perfectly why that's the case. So take a look. Former President Obama has been commenting on the current state of politics in recent interviews, and he's warning progressive Democrats to be careful how they pitch their platforms. Take a look. If you believe, as, as I do, that we should be able to reform the criminal justice system so that it's not biased and treats everybody fairly, I guess you can use a snappy slogan like, defund the police, but you know you've lost a big audience the minute you say it, which makes it a lot less likely that you're actually going to get the changes you want done. Right. So does he have a point here, Sonny? You know, I'm always loath to um, criticize President Obama because I'm such a fan, but I do think he's wrong here. I mean, when you think about defund the police, that's not a term that was crowdsourced or tested in focus groups. You know, that's a term that was born, um, a rallying cry that was born out of this over-policing of black and brown communities, born out of the frustration of seeing black and brown men and women killed in the streets by police officers. And defunding the police does not mean for the... It's the hundredth time I've explained it does not mean uh, eliminating police departments. It doesn't mean stripping agencies for all of their money. It's reimagining policing in this country to address systemic racism. We defund school programs all the time and they call it defunding school programs, yet no one seems to have a problem with that. But people all of a sudden have a problem with defunding the police, that term. And I don't think you should allow people to co-op the movement and, and tell protesters what language they should use. I think, you know, President Obama was a community organizer, and I really think that he, uh, you know, knows better. I spoke to my good friend, Alicia Garza, you, you guys have met her, and she co-founded the Black Lives Matter movement. She told me when they first came up with the Black Lives Matter movement, Movement, people told her that they should call it the All Lives Matter movement. Now, I think that that would have been a mistake. No. You know, uh, because that, that well, also was different. born of protesters in the street. Yeah, but, but I think well, what I he's trying with, to say is that people... Yeah. Hold on, hold on a second. I think what he's saying is how people perceived that message and how it was carried through is the problem. That's, I think, what he's saying. Be aware of how you're presenting yourself because people do grab it and run. It's, you know, it, we saw it in uh, Miami. We saw it all over Florida, how people took that message. Didn't matter how many times you said, that's not what it means. People took that because the right kind of grabbed it and turned it into something else. Go ahead, Joy. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, but I think that Sonny came up with a better slogan, reimagine the police. Yeah. That's a good slogan. It's, it's more accurate. The defund the police is not an accurate statement. It has to be more like, here's an accurate statement. Give me liberty or give me death. There you go. And I dated Patrick Henry, so I happen to know that's a good one. But um, the thing about it is it's like <laughs> pro-choice also and pro-life. Those things don't work either. It should be pro-woman. 
they need to get a slogan that does not make people nuts and defund the police scare well, this what, country and that's why so many democrats well that's lost. what he's saying so it's yeah. not working that's I, what yes. I disagree that's what obama is saying I disagree I know you do, but go I ahead, think you're Sarah. wrong this time, Sonny. Oh, and well, I, I thought I'd you. do it you when I came that. back. I didn't know how much time we had. Do you want me to go? Because I actually, I do uh, agree with President Obama that when there's any confusion, I understand what Sonny is saying, that there's an oh, anger, goodness. there's a rage, that you can hear that and agree with where you're going, but not how you get there. And I think what President Obama said uh, resonated with me because I think that if there's any confusion, how do you speak across to more people? It's, you know, um, your friend, uh, Alicia right. Garza, said it's all about math. It's getting more people, not just your community, to understand it. And in order right. to do that, you've got to make sure you don't lose some of those people in the messaging, as President Obama said. So but, I, I really appreciated the quote. Oh. But you also said Guys, don't I hate to do this to you, but, other people to but we have to go. Movement. So usually when I am critical of The View, Sonny Hostin is uh, the one that I agree with the most if I'm going to agree with any of them, which is pretty rare, to be honest. Um, but, you know, over the years, she's been growing more and more out of touch. And, you know, I think it was last year that was basically the straw that broke the camel's back for me when they were all lying about Medicare for All, how popular it is, its advocacy. And that really, that, that irritated me. And I kind of held this grudge uh, against them. But what we saw here from Sonny Hostin I mean, she said everything that I would have said in that predicament. You know, this isn't some sort of uh, slogan that a politician came up with. This manifested organically on the ground. I mean, it's not like abolish ICE where AOC is the one who kind of spoke this into existence. Defund the police came from the bottom up, not the top down. And that makes it very different. Very different. And she says, you know, we talk about reimagining policing in this country to address uh, systemic racism and we defund school programs all the time like everything she's saying is reasonable and I think that Jamal Bowman put it best if you're more uncomfortable with a slogan than black people getting murdered by the police at alarming rates then I mean you're the one with the issue and it's just a matter of educating people and changing their hearts and minds I mean we shouldn't base our policy preferences on what is or isn't popular we should support policies that are good policies. Now, Joy Behar and the other host disagreed with Sonny Hostin. Joy Behar said we should call it, you know, reimagine the police. It's not working. And she then uses, you know, pro-choice and uh, pro-life as a reason why Democrats often miss the mark when it comes to labeling and it should be called pro-woman. Now, I don't agree with what Joy Behar is saying with regard to defund the police because I think that defund the police is very specific. We take the funds that we are giving to police departments, and we reallocate them into other social services. So rather than, you know, just calling the police for everything, mental health issues and whatnot, we actually have a social worker come out to deal with mental health crises, you know, something that they're more trained to deal with and not police officers. Like, we can't just have this one-size-fits-all approach to policing. We have to reimagine policing in America. And defund the police, I think, speaks to that. And if it's not popular now, we make it popular. We keep pushing to make sure that this is something that individuals uh, support, right? This is what happened with Medicare for All. It wasn't always as popular as it is now. We had to work on it and convince people, and we won. So you don't run away from something just because it's not popular. But I do think that what Joy Behar is saying about marketing, it is important. Because Democrats oftentimes are terrible at marketing and Republicans, they're pretty effective at marketing. And I don't necessarily believe it's because, you know, Republicans are geniuses. I think it's because they're disciplined in their messaging, right? So they say something and initially you'll think, wow, that's really stupid. Nobody's going to believe this. And then they say it so much that it ends up sticking. If Democrats were this disciplined, it wouldn't really matter what the policy is. You just elevate one issue, use an anecdote, and you run with it and you stick to it. And that actually does work. So when it comes to like pro-life and pro-choice, I do think that there is some truth to what 
uh, Joy Behar is saying, because when you call a Republican who's anti-abortion, pro-life, you're giving them far more credit than they ever would deserve, because these individuals oftentimes who identify as pro-life support bombing other countries. They support wars. You know, they don't think that individuals should be guaranteed health care. That's free at the point of service. So that's not pro-life. So why are we calling them pro-life? Why are we calling ourselves pro-choice when they can easily misconstrue that and say, well, that means that you think that abortion is the pro-choice and not that, you know, we're, we're in favor of more freedom for women. Like, these are things that Democrats have to think more deeply about, I think. But it's not even about them, like, getting better at marketing. I think that this is something that Democrats and the left has to work on. Discipline really is the key. Because, you know, when Republicans say something, they're they're relentless. They have Fox News say it. They have their politicians say it and repeat it. Like, it's the same thing with death panels and Obamacare. Like, all of a sudden, people were worried about death panels because Republicans said that we should fear death panels. And it sounded stupid at first, and it was stupid, but if you say something enough... That raises the salience of that issue. So, um, you know, there, there's there's a lot to be discussed. I think that this conversation is important. Like, I think that talking about the efficacy of slogans and marketing, it does matter. But when it comes to defund the police, this is something that manifested on the ground, as I stated earlier. So, you know, you can't attack politicians for simply doing what they should be doing, adopting what activists are encouraging them to support. You don't attack the politicians for adopting the slogan of activists. You attack the politicians who don't support this mass movement, perhaps the largest civil rights movement we've seen in America. So, you know, I really give Sunny Hostin credit here because everything that she said was astute.